Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's having a good morning. Let me check my sound. We're good on sound. Fantastic. Hey, everybody. So I hope everybody's having a good morning. I hope that you're ready to do some 3D modeling, because I am. I'm going to enjoy the heck out of that. Already had my breakfast, had my eggs this morning. What did you guys have for breakfast? I want to point out to you that I have, uh, let's turn it on right here. There we go. Right over here, this is your area for, this is kind of your palette. Go ahead and, and put whatever you want in the chat if you're watching live. And uh, just say hi. I'll, I'll say hi back to you a little bit as we're, as we're broadcasting this morning. I want to start out today by making a, a custom accessorized chibi mall. You can take the chibi malls that you know and love and you can make a custom accessorized chiba mall with some accessories. So we're going to start off today by doing a little bit of that just for fun. So let's switch over to the computer screen and get going on that. There we go. Now, I mentioned in the video that you can do it a bunch of different ways. But before we get started, what I want you guys to do in chat is... Uh, Here's the list of accessories that we have. It's not really very visible this way. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Well, bigger does interesting things, but it doesn't make the words bigger. So what are you going to do there? Uh, so we have got unicorn horn, umbrella, top hat, sun hat, pacifier, mustache, a monocle, lips, a lay, uh, a nice little halo to wear. Grass skirt, flowers, devil wings, clown nose, a bow, and angel wings. And I want you to go ahead and just put in the chat which ones you want to see the most. I'd like to hear what you guys would like to have accessorized. But first, I'm going to have to pull up a... A model for us to work with. Now, which one haven't I accessorized? On the main, if you look at the main Chiba Malls Kickstarter page, you'll notice that I've already accessorized a bunch of them. I did that just for fun, but I have since modeled some other ones. Let's, uh, <laughs> oh, it does that, does it? All right, well, let's pull up the, the Chiba Malls Kickstarter. Let's take a look at that main page. Let's take a look at the ones that I already accessorized here. So here we go. I've got everything from Percival, the owl, the bee, the hedgehog. I think the bee was probably the last one. So I haven't done I haven't done the fox. I haven't done the rhinoceros. Oh, let's let's accessorize the rhinoceros today. That'll no, we already accessorized. Sorry, I did it. I did one off camera. I did just to test this out. So let's do. Let's do the fox, Tallulah Fox. So here we go. There's Tallulah all ready to be accessorized. Isn't she adorable? And let's jump over to the chat and see what you guys are saying you want to do for some accessories. What accessories would you guys like to do? No suggestions yet. Um, no suggestions yet, so I'll just go ahead and pick a couple of them. So what I've done is I've just dropped the model into my slicer, and I'm using flash print for this one because we're going to be printing this on my flash forge here. And uh, we can do any accessories that we want. So what are we going to start with? You know what? I want to, I like to do bad ideas. I don't know why, but I enjoy doing ones that nobody else would do. So a top hat, I see a top hat in the suggestion, so we're going to go ahead and put a top hat in there. So I'm just going to drop the top hat STL in there. And the top hat's sitting there, it's inside. All we have to do is move it. There we go. How do we move it up? Oh, here's how. Pull this up. Now some slicers don't like it when you move things up they try and put it back onto the build plate and that's fine but there are settings to override it fortunately flash print has no such compunctions it is ready and willing to just 
have that be floating in the air relative to anything else. So that's good. We can do that. All right, there's a cute little top hat on there. Any other suggestions? Socks? I haven't got socks. Besides, foxes bring their own socks, don't they? Let's put... So here's what I want to do. Here's the bad idea. I like to do bad ideas. I'm going to do the angel wings. Uh, we'll worry about repairing that model later. We'll just ignore that for now. Oh my goodness, I kind of like the angel wings just sticking out. It looks like a... I did not intend this, but this looks like like major mutton chops for for our fox. So I almost think I'm just going to go with that. I wasn't going to go with that, but now that I see how just wonderful that looks, that's not the way it's supposed to be, but we're going to go with it. My bad idea was going to be to do angel wings and devil wings, and I suppose I can still do that. So here we go. Let's throw the devil wings on there. We're going to move them up into the... Oops. Let's move you back down. Let's grab the devil wings. Let's move them up. All right. There we go. Oh, missing the clicks. <laughs> Can't seem to be getting my clicks on today. All right. Let's move it back. Angel wings and devil wings. How bad of an idea was that? Terrible. Why am I doing this? Because it's funny. Now, I really should tilt this, but I want it to print without support, so I'm going to leave it. But when you do yours, when you make your customized Chiba Mall, you can tilt that all you want. That is just fine. Oh, do we have room for one? You know, we have room for one more if we choose one carefully. So I'm, I'm actually not modeling. I'm just preparing a print in flash print. This is just a slicer. This is just what you use to prepare a print's for your 3D printing. Now we'll, we will do some modeling later. We'll be pulling up some some blender and doing some modeling. But for now, let's go ahead, find that. See, we gotta put a unicorn. You can't have a unicorn horn and not use a unicorn horn, I say. We need to use that unicorn horn. There we go. Just get it into position. Just moving it around in the slicer. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that just... Oh. <laughs> that makes me laugh. That makes me happy. Uh, I hope it makes you happy as well, because that makes me smile. Okay, we're going to go ahead and slice this up. Set it up for PLA. Do, 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 do. There we go. Can we turn off infill? We could probably turn off infill on this print. Let's do that. Yeah, continue slicing. Now, one thing I like about... Uh, we, need, we need a name for this. Uh, Unifox. Sir Unifox. Uh, Dragonborn. <laughs> All right. Now, one thing I like about about this slicer over other slicers, and I haven't fixed my camera, let's do that real fast, is that this slicer, ooh, and that is, let me know if my stream starts going down because I'm taxing my computer too much, but you'll notice that this slicer does an inclusion of all of the models. They aren't just in there and overlapping. There's a little bit of ugliness down here, but for the most part, those wings aren't just sitting inside of here. Now, I noticed when I did this with Cura before that those wings and, and all the objects just kind of overlapped each other. Now, fortunately, like I said, uh, you can do 0% infill on on these models. They all work with 0% infill real well because they've got that nice rounded top. And so you can you can uh, just do 0% infill and that means that the only places where the print will be overlapping. See the problem that you're gonna get is that it it prints in one area and then it tries to print over top of that and because there's already something there, a part where it already printed, it's gonna get some backlog. It's gonna get some some uh, 
uh, backwash in there and it's going to clog your nozzle if you do too much of that. And if you have infill, it'll be going over the same spot over and over again for each part where it overlaps and that's no good. But if you turn off infill, it will only do it on the very outside edges where they cross. And then it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And a little bit minimal, but, but not so much that you need to worry about. Okay, I've gone ahead and started that print. And so that you guys can see that print, I'm going to go ahead and, and turn on my phone and use it as a camera. So let's, let's take a look. No, let's do it like that. Okay, turn on the phone camera. And let's change the setting. There we go. Now you guys can see. There you go. You guys are seeing my stream and my recording setup. So there's my there's my there's my lights. Lights all around, making me look bright and, and good to see. There's the camera that I usually use for my videos, but today I'm going through the webcam because I'm streaming and I haven't got a, a video capture card for that camera yet. Maybe I'll use some of the cheap and mall money for that. There's the fan to keep me cool because those lights get awful hot. And here, we'll come around to the printer. And we're just gonna go ahead and take this camera and we're gonna set it in there. How's that working? That's looking really good. We'll just go ahead and take this, shrink it up just a little bit. There we go, there we go. Isn't that fun? That's a little bit of silliness for our morning. And we'll go ahead and start that print, and uh, we'll we'll just keep an eye on that as we as we work. We'll close this down, and we'll go ahead and start up Blender now. It's time to it's time to start that up. Uh, so a lot of people talk about which which modeling program they use. And a lot of people have a lot of strong feelings about that, and I understand that. Uh, I've got some feelings about about the things that, but you know, the things that I, I have strong feelings about might surprise you. So I'm just gonna open up a blank Chibamal project. This is my blank Chibamal project. Okay, that's going good. That's going good. <laughs> that's silly. I like it. All right, free CAD for parametric modeling. Yeah, Fred, parametric modeling is good. We we like parametric modeling. That's all right. But uh, let's see, a hula hippo. That's cool. Now, what are we modeling today? Well, we got a couple of options today. So uh, I had the the Chibamal's Kickstarter reached a new stretch goal, which is super exciting. So let me pull up the Chiba Malls chart here, which you can see right there. Let's put it in the middle. And you'll notice we're up to $3,800, which means that we cross another stretch goal at 35, and we will be crossing another one at... Wait, did we cross two? We crossed two stretch goals. That's so exciting. This this was a good weekend for Chiba Malls, without a doubt. Uh, but one of those stretch goals is going to be a hundred dollar backer, and the hundred dollar backer said that he wants to do a a gerbil. Was it a gerbil? Let me double check my email. And make sure he said a gerbil. So he said he wants to do a guinea pig, guinea pig. And then the voting from you guys, from the backers, said that we are doing a cat. Now I also want to do a koala, but I'm going to respect. The votes of the people. And of course, if you if you haven't backed Chiba Malls yet, go to chibamalls.com back and you guys can have a vote in the next animal that we do when we cross the you know, I'm gonna say four thousand. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this back. If we if we reach four thousand dollars with this Kickstarter, I will be very happy. So if we reach four thousand, we'll do one more animal. I might just do a koala anyways to finish it off because I want to see I want to see at least one from Australia in there. But let's turn that off right now. And uh, so are we going to do the guinea pig or the cat today? We could do either one. Wouldn't really matter to me which one we did. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at the comments here. I'm looking over at the comments seeing what you guys are saying. 
clog your nozzle. Yeah, don't clog your nozzle. That's no good. Lightwave broke their OBGA export. That's sad to hear. It's 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 funny. Ferret. Okay. And 3D printing painting. So here's here's what I'm thinking. Uh, can we still do can we still do drawing with? All right. That's fantastic. So if I do a cap, let's do a cap today. Okay, we're going to start the cap. But here's here's my thinking. We got two options for the cap. One, we can do it vertically like this, and we can put you know a little cat nose here, little cat eyes, little cat ears. Okay, we can do a vertical cap. <laughs> that didn't turn out the way I thought it would, but that's all right. Or. We could do a horizontal cat. Now, a horizontal cat is a little bit more true to uh, is a little bit more true to the cat. <laughs> That's not turning out at all like I was thinking. So we could do it like that, and it would look it would look adorable like this, without a doubt. This would be a cute little kitty cat. But for some reason, I feel like doing the cat vertical. So what do you guys say? Do we want to do a vertical cat or do we want to do a horizontal cat? And I definitely I definitely want to do a koala. So Rattler in the comments here is saying you, you definitely need to do a koala. And I definitely, but I want to do more than just a koala. So sound off in the, in the chat if you guys want to do a vertical cat or a horizontal cat. I think the cat could go either way. I'm gonna do it vertical. I'm gonna do it vertical. I've, I've just been thinking about it, and I just it, that feels right to me. So we're gonna go ahead and delete the uh, the horizontal body, and we're just gonna do a vertical one. And we're gonna start the way all cheap malls start with a plane. Well, not not all, but this one definitely will. And we're going to move it out. Now I like to move it. It depends on where I want my origin, but I want my origin today to be up near where the nose is. So this is gonna be the nose, so we'll just rename it nose. And uh, just just to avoid frustration, we're gonna go ahead and save right now. We need a name for the cat. Oh, there are so many good cat names. There are so many good cat names. Sound off in the comments what name you think this cat should be named. Hmm, that's not quite right. It's not quite right, but we'll figure it out. Now we're gonna, we're gonna take this simple shape and instead of modeling it the hard way, we're gonna let the modifiers do the hard work for us. So we're gonna shrink wrap that to the body. And we're gonna solidify it. We're gonna give it good solidify. We're gonna give it a solidify of two. And then we're going to subdivision surface it, make it as smooth as we can. That's maybe too smooth. No, it's not. It's perfect. Might pump up the smoothness with the body. Well, we're, we're fine. This is fine. Now that I don't know if that quite looks like the cat nose that I'm looking for. Let me see. I'm going to put I'm going to put a nose right there. And how are we going to work on that? No wait, that's not right. That's not right. We got to get the eyes in there. Let's just keep working. You know, there's plenty. Of, there's plenty of time for fiddling, and we will work that out later. Now I'm just gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit on the eyes, and I'm just gonna duplicate them, and then I'm gonna add a mirror modifier to them. I'll move that mirror modifier up. I want that mirror modifier near the top of the stack. Where is it? Wait, other way around. Don't don't do that. All right. Mirror modifier, go up. And we're going to mirror it around. I, have, I created an empty object in this scene. It's just, it's here in the scene, and it's just sitting. You can't see it. Let me turn it off. Well, you, even if you could. It's just sitting at the origin. Just an empty object sitting at the origin. And, and it's useful for things like this. Now, I just realized I, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. But that's all right. We got plenty of time. See, the offset on the solidify needs to be changed down to zero. 
that way the, the mouth kind of sits in just a little bit. So we're going to change that to zero. The thickness of the eyes is only going to be one. Now I had somebody who strongly felt that I needed to make the eyes sunk in and not and not sticking out of the faces. And I kind of agree with them, but I kind of don't. And so I'm going to I'm going to say for you guys, what do you think? Should the should the eyes be be holes in the shape or should it be sticking out of the shape? Man, using my phone for a webcam is working. It's working really good. I'm kind of happy with that. Let's see what you guys Oh. Oh, I like that one already. Okay. Let's see. Cecil the cat. That's nice. Ragnar the cat. I like the idea of the cat being just, just this dominating personality that's just, I am Ragnar the cat. That, that, I mean, that makes sense for a cat. It really does. Uh, let's see what else we got. I should make the cat's eyes real skinny. Oh, that, that, that looks pretty good. I think the mouth or the, the nose is too wide, though. Too wide for a cheap mall. It's lovely, but it's just too wide for a cheap mall. All right, and I'm gonna. Oh, and I, I need to rename this. This isn't the nose anymore. These are the eyes. Always name your objects as you go, guys. Let's see what other names we got. How am I liking Blender 2.8? Oh, uh, so wait, here we go. Catman do. That's funny. Mittens. That's you know, it's pretty standard. We'll go with it. Uh, Kathy, Callie, Bassich after the god cat god Bast. Bast well, I may have to may have to veto that one because it sounds too close to something else. But I like this one. Persilla. Persilla. That's so good. Smile. That makes me laugh. I like it. It's good enough for Garfield. Okay. Sockets in eyeballs out, which is a thing. And John is the name. And hello, Marius. How you doing? All right. Blender 2.8. How am I liking it? Let's talk about how I make. You know, of course, it took me a little while to get used to. I don't know quite why. Well, because it was different. That's why. But once I got used to it, I realized it, it, it's just a winner. It's just good. I think these eyes need to move up just a little bit. Here's the nose. Here. Uh, oh, wait. That's not... Okay, this is the nose. This is the muzzle. Let's get that right. And here is the nose. And this one doesn't need to be as thick. But it does need to be shaped properly. So let's. Uh, cat noses have a have a particular shape to it. And the whole point of Chiba Mall is to kind of figure out what is the the critical elements of an animal and represent those. It's simplified. Since it's simplified, you can't. You, you, you have to cut corners. Okay, that's just that's just the way it has to be. But you have to choose carefully what corners you cut. And you know, I'm wondering. I'm wondering. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the cut tool to cut here. So I, I really, really like Blender 2.8. I think that they've made every right choice. Are the things they could do better? Sure, it's not perfect yet, but it's getting better. And and I like that they're working on it. And I like that it feels like they're they're trying to make it better in every way. So I, I support it. I recommend it. Let's Instead of making the lower one smaller, let's make the upper one bigger. That is the most that is the most detail I've put into a Chiba Mall mouth yet. And 
I think it turned out pretty good. What do you think? I think it turned out pretty good. Um, Marcus? You may do Marcus, but that's for a dog. Uh, hey, Info Marius Reese, it's good to it's good to see you. All right, let's see. So we've got that. That's looking pretty good, but we'll see how it looks after. I'm not convinced with these eyes, though. The more I look at them, the more I think if I'm going to do this with the eyes, I'll need to I'll need to commit to eyeballs, and that's that's not the cheap them all way. The cheap them all way is to. Is this all too high? Feels like it's too high. <laughs> Uh, nose is getting all kinds of messed up, so let's fix that real fast. There we go. Is that nose too big? We got time for fiddling. We got plenty of time for fiddling. Let's move that up because the next thing we're going to add is whiskers. Whiskers. How in the world? Like my spell checker brain just turned off. That was that was awful. And that's recorded for the world now. The world will forever know that I spelled whiskers. Oh, I don't even remember how I spelled that. That was amazing. Amazingly bad. Alright. There we go. Now I'm just gonna subdivide this along here a couple of times so that when I do a shrink wrap where's my shrink wrap? I can never find the modifiers on the first try <laughs> mess that up alright bring it back here there we go now we're just going to duplicate them rotate them and that's close enough because the shrink wrap will take care of the rest. I want that higher, so the eyes have to be higher. Well, my whiskers went away. There we go. Let's solidify those right now. And let's subdivision surface them. This I do a lot of that on on Chiba Malls. It's it's a lot of flat shapes. Subdivision surface. I forgot my mirror modifier. Let's put that on there right now. All right, let's move that mirror modifier up. And I don't need to, to pin this one to the empty because I, I moved it in edit mode, so its origin is in the middle, so it still goes around. I think, I think though, hmm. oh, that's, that's better. I don't know why that's better, but I immediately did that and I liked it, so we're going to go with it. I feel like this cat's just a little bit too wide in the front. Maybe it's the way that the perspective mode changes it and makes it look like it's looking up, but uh, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. Oh, the printer on the camera stopped. <laughs> what happened here? What happened here? I don't know what happened to the camera. Thank you guys for the notification. Uh, let's let's fiddle with the settings for just a second. I was impressed with how that was working. Are we still? Let's do it again. Let's turn it back on. Yeah, I'm using an app on here called IP Webcam. And uh, that's allowing me to use my phone as a mobile webcam, which is exciting. It's, it's neat to do that. Oh, oh, I think we're getting all the technical problems. My monitor just went out. And whenever that happens, the only way I can fix it is to restart the stream. So I'm going to blink out for just one second and I will be right back and hopefully everything will, it'll just be, it'll just be seamless for you. You won't even notice. It'll be just half a second. So I'll see you guys 
in just one second we'll come right back here and we're back see told you guys I wouldn't take but one second all the technical problems I just switched my second monitor out which used to be a smaller resolution monitor for an HDMI monitor and yeah it, it blanked out it decided it wasn't gonna have any part of that and so I don't know what to do about that I'll have to see about that these are all things that I'm gonna try and fix uh, with some money from the Chuba Malls Kickstarter. Let's uh, let's pull that up real fast. How's Chuba Malls doing? I don't think that's updated at all. Either that or nobody's donated anything. Both of which are possible. But we're not worried about that right now. Right now we're worried about our cat. Now of course any cat needs to have good cat ears. So that's what this... We're going to start with a cube shape for the ears. We're going to put them up here. Let's go back into orthographic mode. And now I could just switch views real fast. That's perhaps not the best way to do it, but I did it anyways. I could just import the bear ears and modify them. Uh, they were close enough to what we're looking for here, but I'm not going to do that. All right, mirror. Let's do the mirror modifier first this time. Excellent. Collapse that down. Don't need to look at that. Now let's subdivision surface both those ears. I don't know why I like to mirror first, then subdivision surface. I just know that I do. And so I will do that whenever I'm doing something like this. All right. Let's increase subdivision surface modifier, make that look really good. I think the inside needs to be needs to be just a little bit yeah shrunk down just a little bit how's that looking that's looking more like a mouse ear than a cat I don't understand I mean I know that's that's more like a yeah, that's a mouse ear. In fact, this whole thing's looking an awful lot like a mouse with those ears. Okay, we need to fix this. Let us try a trick. First thing I'm going to do is make the first modifier be a simple modifier, which means it doesn't actually change the geometry or smooth anything out. And then the second one will smooth it out. So if we're looking at it in like wireframe mode here, you'll see that the first modifier just adds cuts in there and then the second modifier smooths it out and because of those cuts it makes it more pointy and I think that's I don't know what do you think is that working or do we need to try something else all right let's uh That's looking more cat-like for sure. That's better. That's better for sure. Oops, I seem to have forgotten something. Grab something. That's better. I feel like this could use just, you know, this is just, this is what we call in modeling. The technical term for this is fiddling. And we, we got plenty of time for fiddling. Oh, that's much. Oh, that's much better. That turns out fantastic. I think I need to, to shrink this part down just a little bit. I want those ears to be a little bit thicker. In fact, I think I want the whole thing bigger. Yeah. I don't know about this curl on the bottom. I have to think about that. And I feel like the whole, the, the ears should go back. They should be at like the halfway point. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. That, yeah, I agree. There we go. There we go. <laughs> More pointed on the ears. I agree, guys. You, you guys are right. You guys did great. Uh, so, looks like a weeble wobble, but they don't fall down. Yeah, this one uh, does look like a weeble wobble, but it's looking pretty good. Did I hack the Da Vinci Color? I have not hacked the Da Vinci Color, uh, and I'll tell you why. 
I really, really want to... I'm not the guy to hack a DaVinci Color. Uh, I'm not... I, I'd, I'd want this to work. It's It's got enough going on. It's got enough experimental stuff going on that I would rather work with DaVinci to make it better. Now, that said, it would make me very happy <laughs> if I could... Uh, if I could use any filament I wanted in there. That's the one thing about this printer that really bugs me, that they're, they're not letting me use any filament I want. Do we like the ears flatter like that, or do we like them more pointed up? Let me, let me, let's do some research, shall we, real fast? Let's, let's do some research with the old Google and see what Google says for cats and what they look like. Here's at about 45, and then straight down on the side. 45 straight down, 45 straight down. Okay, I think we got the answer right there. Always good to do research. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so about 45 and straight down. So about what we got there. That's, that's about good. Yeah. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Let's go on, let's work on the pause. And you guys are going to be ashamed for how simple the pawns are, or the, the paws are. Well, now, let me think. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go real fast, and I'm going to pull in the fox's paws. So I'm just going to append those from the fox. Where are the paws? Feet. That's what I call them on the fox except that we are going to call them and we're going to remove the texture for now. We don't need a texture on there just yet. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Well, that's good, that's good. We still don't need a texture on there. All right. Now, I got... <laughs> I don't think I need... Now, for most Chiba Malls, I, I want to keep things simple you know what I'm saying I want them to be and so I would do just spheres for this but oh my goodness that's that's awful what modifiers we got on here just subdivision surface and a mirror okay we're gonna have to uh, oh and I'll bet that mirror is using a second oh it's not well we're gonna put that to the empty object All right. All right. Let's, there we go. Let's cut this. I'm doing this so that I can adjust the shape just a little bit, make it just a little bit more rounded. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. That's not the way I want it. Something's wrong. Why does it feel like we're... Oh, I see. I see. Well, let's let's turn off the mirror modifier for just one second. Because I'm going to move the origin. The origin's way down here, and I want to end the pause. So, object, set origin, to geometry. There we go. Now I can turn that mirror modifier back on, and now I can rotate the pause. I can do whatever I want with the pause. There we go. That's looking good. That's looking that's looking nice. Yeah. Uh, my daughter has recently begun experimenting with screen communication. She's getting rather good at it. Now, I'd love to take the paws and do that with them, but that creates too much of a shelf. Now, I want them to be curled like that, you know what I'm saying? But that creates too much of a shelf. Uh, a fatal point, thank you very much for backing. Much appreciated. 
uh, long tail. Yeah, we're definitely going to do. Maybe I'll do the long tail first. But I, what I was saying here was, I, I want to curl the paws like that, but that creates too much of a of, of an overhang. So we're going to have to just. Maybe I'll do it just a little bit of that, but for the most part, we're going to have to just live with it the way it is. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what? Speaking of stuff we don't have to live with, though, I am going to take these points here and make these paws just a little bit rounder. There we go. Now we're getting some weird pointiness on the tips here. And I'm wondering why. Well, that's why. That makes sense. I wonder if I can, I wonder if I can uh, dissolve that edge there. And dissolve that edge. I think what's happening. Yeah, that worked. That worked great. So what was happening here was I was defining a triangle and then stretching that triangle so it was pointed out. And so when it smoothed, yeah, it had little nubs on there. When I got rid of that edge, so now that whole face is being defined by this polygon. And that polygon, to be fair, is messed up. The triangles on it can be going e any which way. It's like it's like folding a pizza. You can fold a pizza this way, or you can fold. A, you, if you fold a pizza this way, it doesn't flop that way because uh, it, it won't. It can't. And and in the same way, if if the vertices, if if a if a square is tilted like that, and I'm, I'm doing this. But if it's tilted like this, it can either connect on the top corner going that way or connect on the bottom corner going that way. And I let it loose. I was controlling that. I was I was like folding the pizza this way and controlling it. And instead, I just said, move these corners up. I'll let you figure out what it did. And it figured it out in a better way than I did. So I'm willing to trust the computer on that one. That was good. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to cheat on the pause. Oh, we also have to get rid of that floor. New floor, don't need it. We're going to cheat on the paws. We're just going to duplicate them, get rid of the rotation, move them down. That worked good. Now, I need to I need to do the cat's belly. We'll do that in a little bit. But we're running out of time here, and we need to focus on what we need to focus on, which is we need a tail. It's not a cat without a tail. Now, how's our fox going? Our fox is looking pretty good. Wait. Yeah, it's looking fine. I thought I saw some stringies on the preview here, but let's uh, let's make that preview a little bit bigger. No, that that's looking just fine. There are some stringies there. I'll have to clean those up later, but I don't think they're getting in the way of anything. That's cool. That's pretty exciting. Let's we got to work on the tail now. There's a couple of ways I could do the tail. One way is I could create a spline, and I could rotate that around and then thicken it. The other way, uh, the other way is I could do just a, a single shape, and I could rotate it around and then use skin modifier on it. Now the advantage to doing skin modifier is it's better. It is. The advantage to doing the spline modifier though is it 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 can it's continuous, so it's a lot smoother. I think I'm going to do the skin modifier. I'm going to go with easy instead of that. Uh, let's see. Renaissance, I, I make this look so easy. I, I do. And that's that's because it's not that hard, actually. And, and Blender 2.8 actually fixed a lot of things that I've been complaining about for a long time. It's, it's just better. It's just better than it was. And so... I'm, I'm willing to recommend Blender 2.8 at this point. All right, let's 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 take this tail and let's just extrude a couple of vertices like this. We're just going to keep it flush to the body. And then let's look at it from the back. I may have to do this one in solid view because my screen's not that bright. Well, that didn't help at all. That looks terrible. Hold on for a second. That helped. All right. <laughs> I got it. I got it in the end. Wait, what am I moving here? Oh, I see. I see. Okay. All right. Do we want... We want this cow... Come on. If we're, we're going to do a cat's tail, uh, we, want, we want the tail to do a nice little S-curve. 
So we're gonna we're gonna bring it around like this. All right. These parts could go a little bit further back. Uh, I, I I don't the shrink wrap modifier. Let's do that right now. Shrink wrap modifier. I can, why can I never find it the first time? Shrink wrap that onto the body. Uh, yeah, that's working. And then we're gonna do a skin modifier on there. Wait, what happened here? What happened here? Why'd you jump all the way there? Oh, I bet I know what I need to do. <laughs> I bet I know what I need to do. I need to run a subdivision surface modifier on it first. Smooth, smooth that out. Wait, what's going on? It's like it's it's modifying along a completely different path. I am confused. Shrink wrap. Oh, I, because I did the wrong modifier. I missed it. I missed the shrink wrap, and I clicked the simple deform instead. Well, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> That's all right. Silly mistakes, we can fix those. And now over here in the modifiers panel, we're going to go ahead and oh, we're going to go ahead and make these. Oh, here we are under item. I'm going to make these a good solid. Uh, we're going with the radius. So, ooh, six might be a bit too much. What do you think? Let's uh. We're going to do another subdivision surface, but this one's going to be moved after, after the skin. So we got a subdivision surface to turn our our tail into a curve. Here, let me let me let me put it all together for you so you can see it. Here, we're just going to look at the tail. We're going to get rid of the body there. That shouldn't have happened quite that way, but we'll go with it. There, just the tail, and we'll turn off all of our modifiers. We'll turn them on one at a time so you guys can see. Uh, yeah, there are tailless cats. That's true. Uh, sorry, I looked at the chat and it said cat without a tail is a minx. That is correct. So we do a subdivision surface on here and it immediately, it smooths the harsh edges into more edges and it gives it a nice curl. So that's nice. Then we shrink wrap it and now it's kind of stuck to the body. And you can't see it because I turned off the body, but trust me it is. Then we skin it, and the skin modifier uses the settings in the edit mode here, in the radius here, to determine how thick or thin it is. And we can actually adjust it along the Y and along the X. So if I wanted to have it look like a wider tail, but be thinner to the body, I could just make this thinner and it'll be like that. And then we got the subdivision surface at the end to take this blocky shape and turn it into a smooth one. I'm, I think I'm just going to keep it as round as possible. But here's the cool thing about this. We can edit this, and I think it's Shift-E. Yeah, it used to be Shift-E. I don't know what the hotkey is for it now, but we can we can edit the tail so that it gets thicker and thinner as we go. So I can take this point, and I can make this wider. So our tail doesn't have to be uniform. It can kind of have like a a cursive thing going on getting thicker and thinner as it goes now do i want to do that is the question and I, i'm not i'm not opposed to it but i'm not married to it either what do you guys think oh that that's awful that's awful i kind of like having this corner be a little bit bigger and then having it taper to the tip but i think what i need to do is i need to make the base a little bit bigger what I'll do after this is I'll, I'll show it to my wife and she'll she'll tell me where I did it wrong and I'll correct it. She uh, She's good at that. Most of the Chiba Malls look good because I talked to my wife about it afterwards and she she told me what I needed to change. So if you if you like the way Chiba Malls look, you can thank my wife. She's got a good eye for these things. Actually, I kind of like that one being a little bit small. Maybe we'll go 2.5 on. There we go. That way the tail's got a little bit. You know what I could do? What I could do is have the tail puff out at the end. I don't know. This is just kind of fun. Control A. It's Control A. It's not Control E. It's Control A, and I can 
I can do it like that. <laughs> oh, I kind of like that, actually. I kind of like having the tail be thicker and then puff out at the end. What do you guys think? Like I said, I'll show it to my wife. She'll tell me. She'll tell me how it needs to be. That is not the way it needs to be. And hopefully that'll all print because it's next to the body, so it gets nice overhangs. So it's I think a ram would make a perfect Shiba Mall. I absolutely want to do a ram. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, and I should talk to you guys about the future of Chiba Malls, what I'm going to be doing with this. I've, I've got so many ideas, but I think what's going to happen is, if possible, I'm going to keep this Monday modeling thing going. And what I want to do is, every Monday, just add to the Chiba Malls a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And I want to add uh, scenery. I want to create the world of Chiba Malls, but part of the problem is the world of Chiba Malls uh, hasn't gelled in my mind about how they're living. I, it's it's kind of like maybe a little bit like the world of My Little Ponies. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Or maybe it's just our world but cuter. But then why are they why are they hunting for each other? Why are there not all the Chiba Malls, and why are we adding more Chiba Malls as things go on? Do we need to have a protagonist, an antagonist, sorry, do we need to have an antagonist here who's making them uh, go away and, and uh, who's kidnapped them or something? Do I really want to go there? I don't know. I'm playing with all these ideas in my head. And if you guys have an idea for the world of Chiba Malls, for the idea of the world of Chiba Malls, let's, uh, let's discuss that. Go ahead and, and maybe leave a comment on this video afterwards. It'll still be here. We need to do the belly. And, uh, yeah, when, when you guys have an idea of how the world of Chiba Malls is going to... Oops, what did I do? What I did was I... I accidentally edited it, or I hit Control-All, uh, Control-R, outside of edit mode, and that caused it to mess up. Mess up. Now, I know it's looking like, hey, I'm just about done with this cap, but there is so much that happens after after we're done because getting the shape here is just one thing getting this to be a 3d printable model requires some serious cleanup and we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to uh, do that yeah kind of like the Smurfs yeah uh, lion cut cat yeah so small village under mushrooms I kind of like the idea of small but I, I want them to look like but do we want to have I don't know and one thing that I think would be really cool, now this is this is a project I'm probably never going to get to, but what am I looking for? Shrink wrap. <laughs> that shrink wrap always, always evades me. One thing that I think would be cool, and this is, this is not something I'm ever going to get to, but maybe, maybe I will. I think it would be cool to have a, um, an installation. A globe printed with all the Chiba Mall animals on it and have a track running around the globe that maybe even like goes into the globe and it goes down the bottom of it but what we do is we mount a, a camera on there maybe a 360 camera or something like that and record a video of it going around I think it'd be real neat even to put on like goggles so that you could like be riding the ride in real time it would be like going through uh, it's a small world in Disneyland but with Chiba Malls and so I'd need a song or something for that. Bring that around to fairs and stuff like that. Um, and have it go inside the globe at one point and have, like, on the walls uh, uh, low poly dinos. You know, as, as we're going through and we're going to have bugs and microorganisms and, and things inside the world of Chiba Malls. But then the walls will have low poly dinos just kind of as a, as a hail back to that because that was... In a lot of ways, this is an extension of low poly dinos. I can't deny that, and I love it. I love that it is. Let me see. I'm gonna. Yeah, no, we're not gonna do that. 
Sorry, I'm trying to decide how I'm going to make the belly work. Well, there we go. That's cute. Now, now, at this point, I wish I had time to sit down and show you guys all that happens after this point because a lot is yet to happen. Uh, I need to... I need to take these individual models. I need to make ones that print, cut off the bottom so that they're flat and make them so that they're included in each other. And then I need to add color data. I haven't even added color data. Uh, am I using the printer built, built in camera to record the printing? No, unfortunately I'm not. You can actually see it uh, on the opposite side of the picture there. Let's take a look at that real fast. The camera, well, actually you can't see it. The, uh, the nozzle's in the way of it. No, I'm not using the camera built or the built-in camera because uh, that's only available for web access, and their web access is funny. So no, I'm not doing. I wish I could because it's got a camera. I should be able to access it, but I can't. I don't know what to do about that. So, anyways, there we go. That's looking pretty good, I think. But now I need to take some time. I need to clean it up. I need to make it a good 3D printable model. I need to add color data. You know what? Let's let's add at least a little bit of color data first. What color? What color should the base color of the Chiba Mall of the cat be? So let's pull up let's pull up the latest render and take a look at that. So in the latest render, and I've, I've spread it out a little bit because um, I would put the word Chiba Malls down the middle here. But we got our reds and pinks and oranges and yellows, and we got black and white up here. And we got our greens and blues and cyans and purples. And taking a look at this, where do we need, where do we need a bit more? It looks to me like we need some orange, orange green in here, or, or yellow green in here, but I don't necessarily want this cat to be green. Uh, so what do you think? Gray cat? Yeah, gray cat would work. Orange tabby? We got a lot of orange here already, but I'm okay with that. I think orange would work okay. So, oh, 8080. Well, I'll have to give that a try. Maybe if I try 8080 on there, I'll be able to access the webcam, and then I won't need to use my phone for that. That would be cool. Let's see, blue. I think we got the entire spectrum color. We can go ahead. We can go ahead and make this orange, and it won't affect a darn thing. So let's make our cat orange. Uh, what are we thinking? A little bit more red. That's. That's orange, isn't it? Now, there is a problem with Blender's uh, color picker, and I will discuss that in a future video. But, uh, what color do we want to make the nose? I shouldn't be spending time on this. I should be going. I have, I have to go to work. I have to go to work. I'm, I'm enjoying spending time with you guys so much, though, that I don't want. Oh, I did, I did the wrong one. Oh, that's fun. We'll play with that a little bit. We'll play with that a little bit. But that's fun. So orange, orange kitty cat. We'll make the ears a different color, make the hands a different color. And then I'll have to create models for it, and we'll get it all going. And phone quality is way better than the built-in quality. I imagine that it probably is. That's a good phone. It's a good phone that I have. But I'm glad. I'm glad you. Thank you for that tip. Uh, uh, a, a fatal paper cut, and uh, hope it wasn't too fatal for you. Let's let's switch it over. Let's end this real soon. So there we go. We've we've modeled Chiba Mall. I've got a a uh, gerbil. No guinea pig. Guinea pig that I need to model. I'm gonna put a little like fluff on it because every guinea pig I've seen has a terrible terrible cow lick. And so we're gonna go ahead and play into that. I want to thank you guys for spending some time with me today. I want to thank you guys for for uh, enjoying this. And if you haven't already, back the Chuba Malls Kickstarter. Uh, it's only got nine more days. It's time of broadcast. And uh, let me know. Well, 
you guys will let me know by your views and comments if this was good for you. Uh, but if the numbers were good, I'd like to do regular modeling streams. I'd like to keep this being a regular thing. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the future. And uh, maybe we can, we can have some more fun doing some modeling. And uh, I guess that's all I got for you guys today. But thank you guys very much, and I'll see you next time.